Hello. Brent Spiner wants me to make a video about what it was like to be at Baptist University with Larry the Cable Guy. First of all, I'd like to say that I had no idea he went to Baptist University. I didn't even know that he was Dan Whitney. Anyways, I'll go. I have to excuse my voice because I have still am on the tail end of this horrible bronchitis the Jesuits have given me, and I'm still coughing up junk. So let's see if we can make it through here. What it was like to be at Baptist University with Larry the Cable Guy. I never would have gone to Baptist University if God didn't give me a miraculous sign that he didn't want me to go to Air Force Officers Training School in Lackland, Texas, right after I graduated from Florida State University with honors in June 1979. While a junior and senior at Florida State University, I was very active in Pastor Rayburn Blair's church, Temple Baptist Church in Tallahassee, Florida. I taught Sunday school and sang in the choir, went out to visit people in their homes to invite them to church. While a senior at FSU, I felt God wanted me to go to a Bible college, which was my dream from my youth. My family's not Christian, and I knew I would get no financial support to go. I thought perhaps I could get a good husband there because I was disgusted with the state university guys who had premarital sex, drank, and smoked, and that was not my bag. I wanted an outstanding Christian guy for a husband and even made a list of qualities I looked for in a husband. No smoking, no drinking, no cussing, no movie theater attendance, especially dirty movies. I evolved more and more into this the more disgusted I got with the loose, immoral guys at Florida State University who seemed to delight in scoring in bed with their girlfriends. Though I got propositioned, propositioned a lot at the State University, I turned down all guys who wanted sex with me. I wanted to save my body for my dream husband. Excuse me, I am still dealing with that horrible bronchitis. It makes my nose itch. I turned on all guys who wanted sex with me. I wanted to save my body for my dream husband who I imagined to be like King David in the Bible. I was a pretty girl but not into glamour at all and paid no attention to fashion and how I dress except I wanted to look feminine and submissive, the proper Christian wife type, and actually felt insulted if a guy seemed only interested in my body or looks. There was one Christian guy that I liked at Florida State University. His name was, well, I'll keep him out right now. But he wasn't interested in me. Ironically, that guy is now on my marriage list and is now a physician. Actually, I'll say his name because I've already mentioned it on my marriage list. His name was Keith Morgan. To make a long story short, I felt like I needed to go to a Bible college to be with my own kind. That these state university heathens were not for me. But I was about to graduate with honors, and perhaps I didn't need to go to a Bible college to be used of God. So at the last minute, right around the time that I was to graduate from FSU, I applied to Air Force Officers Training School. I thought that as an officer, at least I wouldn't have to worry about money, and I could live my life in the military and travel around the world and... Maybe I'd end up with another officer for a husband, you know, a Christian. I thought you don't have to be a Bible college person to be a spiritual person. I could get a spiritual military officer for a husband. However, I wasn't sure I liked the masculine image of being a military officer and that it might hurt my chances to get my dream Christian husband. He might think me a woman's liber. You know, a woman of one of those ERA, women's rights women, which was a grave sin in my strict Baptist church. I really didn't know who I was until I got into my early 30s. So it was early September 1979, and I'd find out within weeks whether I'd be accepted to Air Force officers training school. It was Wednesday, and I was getting dressed for the Wednesday night prayer meeting. And I had just come back from Tallahassee. I was living with my mother in... Cutler Ridge, Florida at that time, and I went to a strict Baptist church Sunday morning, Sunday night, and the Wednesday midweek sir, I'm going to give you a chance to speak to me about your will. You know, I thought about going to Baptist University of America. Uh, I'd heard an ensemble of their sing at my church, and I was pretty impressed with them, so I'd, I thought about going there. But I changed my mind and decided to apply to Air Force officer training. 
However, if you really want me at Baptist University of America, speak to me at the service tonight. That night, the preacher announced that we had a special guest speaker who had to fly in for an emergency because his relative was in the local hospital and that he would be our speaker for that evening. The man was the executive vice president of Baptist University of America. He preached a message on the excuses we make to avoid God's will for our life. I couldn't believe it. It was like God sent that message straight from heaven. I went to Roger Ellison and told him that his message was a miracle from God. He said he wanted me at Baptist University, and I asked him if it was too late for me to go since, I'm, I'm reading from my notes because I, I try to organize my presentations, since classes had already started for the fall semester that September 1979. You know, I've often wondered <clears throat> why God wanted me at Baptist University, because look at me now. I'm not a missionary. I'm not a preacher's wife, and I don't even go to church. But I packed my bags that night while my non-Christian mother looked at me in disbelief. I had $20 on me after I bought my airline ticket. That was it. I took the next Delta Airlines flight to Atlanta around 3 in the morning, and I remember looking out the, the windows of that jet and seeing the, the lights of the Miami skyline just get lighter and lighter as that jet soared into the sky towards Atlanta. And I questioned my own sanity. I had a really good chance to be accepted to Air Force officers training. They gave me a room at the dormitory and a roommate. The buildings weren't fancy, and Baptist University looked like a revamped small high school building with white concrete walls with stairs you climbed to go to the women's dormitory on the second floor of one building. All the guys had a dorm in one building, and all us girls had a dorm in another building. And we had a dorm parent like a monitor to ensure proper spiritual behavior in the dorm and had to attend evening devotions all together at night right before bedtime. It was manda mandatory to attend this evening devotional time before bedtime, which was 11 p.m. if you lived in the dorm. The small private school, along with its high school-looking expanse of grass outside for sports, volleyball, softball, etc., and we all participated in that was surrounded by a barbed wire fence because it was in the middle of a sort of bad neighborhood in Decatur, Georgia. You had to go through a security gate manned by one of the male students any time you left or entered the school. Us dorm girls had a dorm mother, Velvia Lewis, a Savannah, Georgia widow, who had a reputation among the guys as a no-nonsense woman who didn't tolerate any hanky-panky. I wouldn't be surprised if the, fu if the future Larry the Cable Guy joked about her secretly in the men's dormitory with his dorm mates as the frustrated spinster. She took me on as her charge, and I went to her church my first year there. It was Pinecrest Baptist Church with Raymond Hancock. I would meet Raymond Hancock years later in 2003 as a Christian school teacher at Landmark Baptist Church in Haines City, Florida. Mrs. Lewis sweetly let me know that I needed to buy a camisole to wear over my bra to ensure no one could see my bra or its straps because I could not allow my bra to show through my any blouse or dress and that some of my necklines needed to go up a little higher. Absolutely no breast cleavage must show ever. I already knew about the knee length dress requirements and that I couldn't wear pants. Within a week, I got a temporary secretary. Now I'm going to continue this on another tape because I don't have enough room on this tape to talk about my experience at BUA with Larry the Cable Guy. Within a week, I got a temporary secretary job that helped pay my tuition for the first semester as a part-time night student. I will continue this on another tape.